Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is a weekly chart of silver and uh, nothing really new. You can see the same trend going on. We've got our silver price here at 1436, 1438, bouncing back and forth. And uh, this is the fake paper price. This is an uneconomic price. Uh, just the fact that this price is a very large percentage below the $21 that we traded when Bear Stearns collapsed tells you that this, this can't be a real price. And it's not a real price. We know it's not a real price because that's not what junk silver is trading at. That's not what a lot of silver is trading at. Can you still get some silver for that? You can. Um, and the people selling it are probably going to end up taking a big loss in, in the long run. Uh, shortages don't consistently come across the board in every category at the same time. Um, we've looked at Venezuela where they run out of first toilet paper and then they now they're running out of food. So let's like a broken record. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the definition of shortage because apparently there's some people who need to brush up on their definitions. And uh, this is, we're going to go back to Braun Shacheki or whatever his name is down at the Perth Mint. But uh, interesting definition here. Now we know what a shortage is. A, a shortage, first of all, let's get this clear. A shortage should never occur in a free market, ever. There should never be a shortage. Because the people who are selling the item should have the common sense to realize that it's going like hotcakes and they're going to run out of it and they need to raise the price fast. And if they raise the price and it slows down, um, then, uh, then they're close to the right price. If they raise the price, it doesn't slow down at all. Raise it some more and raise it some more and raise it some more until it slows down then you found an equilibrium price. So a shortage just cannot exist without interference in a market. That's This is an economic law. This is axiomatic. If you have a shortage, or another term is allocation, if that exists, something is interfering with the free market. Now let's read this. Very interesting here. I'd like to know of the wiki changes but uh, it says, in common use, the term shortage may refer to a situation where most people are unable to find a desired good at an affordable price. That's stupid. No, at the current price. Especially where supply problems have increased the price. Market clearing happens when all buyers and sellers willing to transact at the equilibrium price are able to find partners. There are almost always willing buyers at a lower than market clearing price, etc. Let's go back up here. In a perfect market, one that matches a simple microeconomic model, an excess of demand will prompt sellers to increase prices until demand at that price matches the available supply, which is market equilibrium. In economic terminology, a shortage occurs when for some reason, such as government intervention or decisions by buyers not to raise prices. Huh? What? You mean decisions by sellers not to raise prices? Is that what they mean? I think that's what they mean. That's what they should have said. Do we really have an area, an error this large in Wikipedia that they don't understand that the decision is by the seller to not raise prices? The price does not rise to reach equilibrium. In this circumstance, there are more buyers at the market price than the quantity of the good or service that is available and some non-price mechanism such as first come, first served, or a lottery. Remember, allocation determines which buyers are served. Oh, so you have a line, you have a queue. So absolutely staggering that Wikipedia can't even get the most essential definition in free market economics correct. They don't know the difference between buyers and sellers. Unbelievable. 
So again, I, I sound like a broken record, but I'm going to sound like a broken record until people get this through their head. The only way you can have a shortage is if the government is interfering in the free market, period. End of story. No exception. 100% law of economics. That's how it works. There's no reason why sellers will not raise prices unless the government is involved. Now, we're going to see this with Shuchecki, of course, because he is the government. He's the government of Western Australia. But let's listen here first to All American Gold Patriot Radio, where rumor is that there aren't going to be any Silver Eagles for the rest of the year. So let's listen to this. There's going to be wait. But you knew and that waiting. Right. And, and you knew waiting. that when, when you placed the orders. The U.S. Mint has once again, and I warn you know, yesterday we kind of went on the, the, the countdown, and the U.S. Mint has suspended all sales, but it gets a little, a little deeper. So here's what I know today. If you're, and this is all in the silver market, and don't worry, you know, there's no shortages, there's plenty of silver out there, and nobody wants it, nobody's buying it, but apparently we just can't mint any. What we're being told today, and actually we got told this yesterday, and called again this morning just to reaffirm it, uh, Silver Eagles... There are none being delivered. There is a rumor, and I'll call it a rumor because we are not allowed to actually speak to the Mint. The Mint delivers, there's nine bullion banks in the world. These are the only places that the Mint ships product to. And then these nine, let's just call them what they really, you know, distributors, then distribute them out to different wholesalers and different retailers. The nine banks are the only ones that are allowed to speak to the Mint. I cannot confirm or deny, and I cannot reveal my sources. How's that? Right? This is the anonymous, the anonymous source. The U.S. Mint is so far behind that there is now talk that they are going to suspend sales, which they've done, indefinitely, and that they may be done selling 2015 Silver Eagles completely and will not begin selling Silver, or when they begin selling Silver Eagles again, it will be 20. Now, we know, obviously, as the years come along, at the end of usually sometime before Christmas. Let me take it up there. Usually, they take about two weeks off and they retool, which is, that's just stupid in and of itself. And uh, an overall point I want to make about this whole thing is that, uh, obviously, these are governments doing this because any private business that operated with the level of idiocy that these mints operate at would be out of business. Uh, But we saw last year was the retooling was the entire month of December. Now we're going to be looking at the months of October, November, and December, probably. How are they going to spin that? So let's look at this article from Silver Doctors. It's virtually impossible to get physical gold in London. And this is Coos Jansen. Just after my colleague Ronan Manley wrote a very extensive article on how much gold is left in London, not much, Petro Plavos, chairman of and co-founder Peter Hambro, discusses gold at Bloomberg Television. He, like Manley, concludes there is very little physical gold left in London from Mr. Hambro. My baseline is they, the Chinese, have been buying and the Indians have been buying in enormous quantities. It's virtually impossible to get physical gold in London to ship to those countries. We get permanent requests from Russia, 
would we please sell our physical gold to India and China? Because there is no physical, only endless promises. And I really worry that the market, that the paper market could be stamped on and people will say, sorry, we'll have a financial closeout and it's all over. Perhaps this quote explains why UK gold export directly to China in June was not a net outflow from the UK because there is little gold left in London and thus the UK had to ramp up import from the US in June to send forward to China. The Financial Times reported on similar gold shortages in London from the FT. The cost of borrowing physical gold in London has risen sharply in recent weeks. That has been driven by dealers needing gold to deliver to refineries in Switzerland before it is melted down and sent to places such as India, according to market participants. The rise does indicate there is physical tightness in the market for gold for immediate delivery, said John Butler, analyst at Mitsubishi. I've also asked Bullion Star CEO Tony uh, Torgny Person in Singapore what he's currently seeing in the precious metals markets. He replied, there are shortages in both gold and silver market from Mr. Person. I just got off the phone with Amark, which is one of the world's largest wholesalers. They are reporting that they have no gold and silver at all live available. They have stopped taking orders for silver maples and silver philharmonics altogether, and the silver eagles are available first in the end of November. For PAMP, there's similarly long delivery times for all minted gold bars. We still have most products in stock because we stocked up as massively as we could in the last weeks, but for many products, we're unable to replenish as of now when we run out. Big squeeze with shortages starting now, both on the wholesale retail level and the bulk level, unless the paper price is reverting up. It may not subside this time around, and then the paper fiat mess, including paper prices of gold and silver, is in trouble. If it goes to the point of shortages at the bulk level, like one kilogram gold bars and 1,000 ounce silver bars, the emperor will stand without clothes. It's getting closer, people. Now, let me show you. This is uh, a search I did. I'm, I'm not really going to bother to find it because actually the statistic I quoted in the past was from FOFOA, and I just can't find it. You think you could find it. How much physical silver is delivered on the comics every year? Now, I believe the figure, don't quote me on this, but I believe the figure is like 8 million or 10 million ounces. 1% of all the silver that's used in the world is actually delivered on the comics. So why does the comics set the price? And why can't I find that number? Uh, maybe some of you can find that for me. But let's go over to... Mr. Braun Shacheki, I already debunked his nonsense before. This is the guy from the Perth Mint, and he's really treading water fast now. Uh, you can see in the comments, they're tearing him apart. This guy, uh, he knows that the game is almost up. He's actually going all the way back to Warren Buffett. So he says, as Kid Dynamite widely hated in gold bug circles, so I guess most will ignore his quote, noted to me in an email, quote, the key to this meme is to start with the false equivalency, registered gold equals deliverable gold, and it ignores the fact, as this commenter notes, that the percentage of the open interest that is actually positioned in the front month to take possession of any gold is about 5%, so that drops his 200 to 1 to about 10 to 1. In my tweet debate with John's... I can't pronounce that. He questioned my skepticism. Why am I so cynical about shortages? Maybe it has something to do with the fact that I first covered this topic in my personal blog way back in August 2008 and repeatedly since without any of the predicted failures of the system. So you get this. He's, uh, he's saying that he was right because the system hasn't ended. Of course, uh, let's go and try to find this guy when the system does end up. I guarantee you, this guy will be nowhere to be found. Alternatively, try this video, which covers the repeated claims of comics' imminent default, which I personally think would be work better with the Benny Hill theme. See, here's mockery. This is what you see with these liars. 
that uh, are in the government. And th- and this person, this person, Bron Sicecki, he's a government agent. He works for the government of Western Australia. And here we go. Conspiracy. Remember the CIA instituted the policy of mocking uh, anyone who tells the truth by calling them a conspiracy theorist. Here we go. For all the conspiracy theories commentators are willing to believe, the one that they do not consider is that maybe Comex warehouse stocks aren't what they appear to be and that maybe they're the ones being played, just like it has been done before. Now he goes back to Buffett in 98, which is hilarious that he needs to go back to Buffett. He says, Bill Holter may not think that you should be shocked about 25% premiums in silver and that whatever you must pay to get it in your hands is fine. Personally, I can't see the sense of paying 25% when for a few percent you can buy physically backed, here it is, pool accounts. He's pushing pool accounts. This guy, this employee of the Perth Mint, now if you followed the videos and the blog, many, many years ago, Jason Hummel brought up the issue of serious problems with Perth pool accounts when people requested delivery from the pooled accounts. And here we've got Chichecki pimping their pooled accounts. That's a huge red, red flag. Think of it this way. When people are willing to pay 25% premium, then for every $100,000 spent, only $80,000 goes to buying silver. Actually, no, Braun. Uh, actually, zero in your theme goes to buying silver because we don't know if you're buying any silver we don't know if your pool account actually has any silver in it, or maybe you just pulled up all the money in your bank account, which would be 5,333 ounces at $15 an ounce. If those people would be prepared to buy pool allocated at 1% fees, then the pool operator is going to is going out and buying 6,600 ounces. That's over a full extra 1,000 ounce bar pulled out of the physical market for each $100,000 spent on silver. You see how he's giving it away right there? No, because it's not pulled out of the physical market because we have no proof that you are actually pooling that metal. Now watch this. He's not just going to uh, try to convince you that you need to use his pool account, but he's going to try to convince you that he's on the same level as Eric Sprott and James Turk. Guess who loves the fact that they're being saved from having to find an extra thousand ounce bar for every five bars currently being bought, bullion banks. So silver buyers are so distrustful of the Perth Mint, Eric Sprott and James Turk and any other pool allocated operator that they're willing to take pressure off the silver market by spending their hard earned dollars on premiums rather than metal. Isn't that an interesting twisted twist that someone would put to that? Now think about that. They're taking pressure off of the silver market when they put their money in the pools. And the reason why, we don't know if the pools are buying silver. We just had Bullion Direct. Remember? That was a pool. Remember when Morgan Stanley said that they were storing the metals and then when a customer requested delivery, they said they didn't have it and they didn't actually store it? And the customer said, well, then why were you charging me storage fees? And the answer was, it's common practice to charge you storage fees, even though we're not storing any silver. People, this is the whistleblowing. This is the red flag. This is the Perth Mint. And uh, they're, they're desperate. I will conclude with this comment from the owner of Australian bullion dealer gold stackers, quote, A few core distributors in the U.S. are making an absolute killing in this market. Not a bad gig when wholesale margins go from $0.05 an ounce to over $0.80 an ounce, and the market is silly enough to say more, more. So when you see the next article screaming about shortages and telling you to stock up on physical at any premium, ask yourself, who is the player and who is being played? I don't know, Braun. Who is the player? Who is being played? So... That is fascinating. These people are getting desperate. Their system is breaking down. Silver is trading 
at an uneconomic price. You, there's no way you can mine an ounce of silver and uh, take the coin from a thousand ounce bar, stamp out a bunch of blanks, put a mark on it, and sell and distribute one ounce coins for $14.40 an ounce of silver. It's impossible. They're lying about it. So again, the broken record. Uh, a shortage is a situation where government intervention, Braun works for the government, where government intervention happens and it prevents prices from rising. They could fix all of this by letting prices rise. But if prices for silver rise to where the market clears, then we're going to have a event in the currency markets and in all of the paper markets. And then that's probably going to be the end of the Western banking cabal. And that's why they are suppressing prices. And we'll talk to you next time.